Content presented on the following podcast is for information purposes only. The views and opinion expressed from host and caregivers are solely given based on the experiences of the individuals involved. Because each person is so unique, always consult your physician, physical or occupational therapist, or medical and fitness advice. Are you struggling to help your aging parents or disabled spouse to do everyday personal care tasks? Are you concerned about them falling or you injuring yourself? What is the task that is so difficult for you to help them to do? You are not alone. We can help. You can receive practical tips and strategies from an occupational therapist and from other caregivers like yourself. And here is your host, Consuela Marshall. Hello, I'm Consuela. And on this podcast, you get to learn about your role as a caregiver. You get to embrace your limitations, learn how to best provide for the needs of your loved one in a safe and efficient manner. And you get to know that you're not alone. Look, every caregiving story is so different. And it's you who get to write that caregiving story for your life. You get to learn how to take care of your loved ones. You get to learn how to accept that you cannot do it all. And you get to learn what to let go. And you get to learn how to what to pick back up. How to pick back up your life. How to walk in tune with your life while also caring for your loved one. Look, I believe you can still find a way of taking care of your loved ones while also taking care of yourself. So stay tuned. We've got some caregiving to talk about. Welcome to Finding a Foothold Podcast. I'm Consuela. I am an occupational therapist and aging in place specialist and a certified dementia practitioner. And I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast. Those who have been loyal and listening, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the downloads. Thank you for sharing the podcast. Thank you for encouraging comments and sharing that the podcast is helping you. For those who are new, Thank you for coming aboard. So I'm here to share with you, to support you, to help lighten your load. And as a way of introduction, I'll share a little bit about myself. I've been an occupational therapist for years. I have worked on a rehab unit and skilled nursing unit. But the great majority of my time, 25 years of being a therapist, has been a home health therapist going into homes providing care to those who are, who've been diagnosed with different diagnoses and diseases and those who have had injuries and accidents and are in need of therapy services in order to regain the best quality of life. And with that, it has given me the opportunity to look face-to-face into the eyes and into the heart of family caregivers, seeing what their struggles are in going from just minding their own business, living their life, to suddenly they're in a role of caregiving, ill-equipped and without the support and a full understanding of how do I do this? And how do I, how do I do this in a way that is going to help me do the best care while also helping me to also stay connected to my life? And that has, that has been what has fueled me to launch the Finding a Foothold Aging and Caregiver Consulting Services. And in the recent months in me leaving home health and opening my own private practice as an occupational therapist, continuing to go into homes and continuing to support patients, clients, caregivers, I've added services and really honed in on what I feel my heart is telling me to do in supporting caregivers. So with finding a foothold, my heart is for all caregivers. But having been the caregiver of my mom who had multiple strokes, there's a special place for those who are caring for a loved one who's had a stroke because it is a very difficult road, like many other diagnoses. And the more I can share from my story, my life, and my profession, professional education and training on how to best care for that loved one, it it can make a world of difference in how the journey looks for you. So yes, I encourage all caregivers to listen to the podcast because many of the things that I share can be used across the board. So thank you so much for tuning in. So enough with that. Welcome, and I'm just so glad that you're here. So I'm going to now switch gears. 
So in my desire to support caregivers who are caring for someone who's had a stroke, let's start talking about that. And I'll start by sharing from my life when I received that call. So in going to the heart of what this, this podcast is about, what do you do when you've received the news that your loved one has had a stroke? And as a therapist, my mind is all over the place in wondering how she's doing and knowing immediately that my life was likely changing and what may now be coming ahead in my mother's life. Okay, so as caregivers, when you receive the news that your loved one has had a stroke, the shock is there. And going through that process of grieving the news, immediately determine that you're now going to be a learner. And that's what I want to focus on today. So if your loved one has had a stroke, it has been a month, it's been six months, it's been a year, it's been two years, it's been three years. Look, it's not too late to fill in some of those gaps on information that you didn't know because there's always a need to educate yourself and be able to make the best decisions at every stage of your loved one's recovery and as they are embracing the new normal in their life. So let's jump right in and say you have gotten the news. So let's talk about becoming a learner. The three things I want to emphasize on this podcast. Number one, you want to learn what is a stroke. Two, what types of strokes can occur. And number three, it's important that you learn right in the beginning how to encourage and motivate your loved one and yourself. Okay, so let's talk about the stroke. And I like to just keep things simple. This is the way I talk when I'm at the kitchen table in houses. And, you know, in case you didn't hear it at the hospital, I'm going to tell you now. And I'm going to help you to understand how important your role is in this, in the recovery process, but without putting a lot of weight on you that you got to fix everything. Because, no, we're not going to go there. But the more you know, the better decisions you can make and support your loved one in making. So let's get into it. So the first one is learning about a stroke. What is a stroke? A stroke occurs in the brain. It occurs in the brain when the brain doesn't get the oxygen that it needs. The brain is the control center of our body. And when the brain doesn't get blood, doesn't get oxygen that it needs, the cells in the brain begin to die. So picture the brain. The brain has blood vessels that go throughout the brain and each blood vessel goes to a specific spot in the brain. And, and that spot or that center, that control center in the brain has a certain function. So what happens when the brain doesn't get the blood that contains the oxygen that different control centers of the brain need? those cells in that control center began to die. And that's why brain look, strokes are so different for everyone because someone's center that controls their left arm may now be damaged. There is a center, one center in the, one portion of the brain that controls the left leg, controlling the throat, controlling the way you clearly think, controlling coordination, controlling movements in your body that impact the way you can do life. Based on the area of the brain that has lost the oxygen, it will determine what will be some of the deficits or the things that you see that your loved one can no longer do. So blood contains oxygen, travels to the brain, and as long as that blood is getting there, everything is fine. But when that blood doesn't reach there, that part of the brain that is no longer getting the oxygen, the cells began to die. So that is the stroke. So now that brings me to the second point I want you to learn about your loved one. So you know they have a stroke. So the second, the thing you need to learn about now is what type of stroke. 
So what keeps the blood from flowing to the brain? What stops that flow to the brain? Two things, two general categories. Something got in that blood vessel and clogged it up. And the blood could not go through the blood vessel to that area of the brain. And then that area starts to die off. And a second way is that blood vessel ruptures. It breaks. And blood that should have been going to an area of the brain now spills out into just a cavity of the brain. And that leads to that area of the brain starting to die off. And that is a stroke. So what I've just described is, number one, an ischemic stroke is when the blood vessel just clogs up. The, can't, the blood can't go through. And the hemorrhagic stroke is when the blood vessel ruptures. So in knowing those two types, the type that tends to be the more severe, the one that leads to more deaths and more devastating diagnosis, it's the one where the blood vessel erupted. It sometimes requires, and depending on the, the severity of the rupture, doctors may need to go into the brain and stop the leaking. And on the other side, if your loved one's blood vessel was clogged because of some type of clot in the blood vessel, they can begin to give them medication that dissolves the clot with the goal of restoring that blood flow to that area of the brain. Much more complicated than that, but that is in simplicity, uh, two types of strokes, ischemic and hem hemorrhagic strokes. So it's important that you learn what type of stroke is because it definitely affects the outcome. And even in knowing that and knowing the different area of the brain that was occluded, that didn't get the blood flow, look, that will determine the deficits that you will see in your loved one. And now I want to go to, uh, I think is really even more important as you are really coming to terms with what is a stroke, what type of stroke they have, is just listen and learn and process what you're hearing but don't lose hope. And I'm saying that because as a therapist, this just know you won't always hear positive things about what the prognosis looks like. You may hear things like, oh, they will never do this again, or they are going to probably not be able to do that again. And they're going to, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of doom and gloom that can be presented to you. And some of it might be factual. It, that may turn out to be the case. But what if it isn't? I've seen cases and worked with patients before that, that do recover. That doctors come back and say, oh my gosh, I never thought I'd see this again. So yes, we do have to live in the real world. There are some permanent changes that can occur in your loved one but also holding on to hope. It's important that you learn how to encourage and motivate your loved one and yourself. Focusing on what are the positive things that are still there? What are the things that they can still do? Focus on those and, and try to encourage them with that to participate in therapies, so that they can have the best outcome. So this is where I will stop for this episode. But on next episode, I will be talking about the key players, the key players on the medical team for your loved one's rehab, that you understand what these different roles are, what part they play. And we will then also be talking about how to advocate for services that your loved one might need that may not be presented to you. And I want to just close by saying September is Fall Prevention Month. And I want to speak to those aging older adults who are listening in. You're still living on your own. You have never fallen 
or those of you all who have parents and they don't fall, you know what? I want to encourage you by saying that's typically where it all starts. We go from, we've never had a fall to a fall occurring and an injury and a setback in your life. So as we are going through the month of September, I will include posts and emails that are going to highlight tips to prevent falls and share with you an upcoming project a book that I'm about to release that shares fall prevention strategies and it contains real life stories of those who are proactive, who make changes so that they can remain in their home and be as safe as possible. So stay tuned for those. And it's been a pleasure to be back and I'm excited. Um, and for those of you all who haven't uh, signed up, I want to encourage you to just sign up for the emails. Visit the website, findingafoothold.com and sign up for the emails where I will periodically send out things that will help and encourage you on your caregiving journey, but not bombard your inbox with emails. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you the next episode. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Finding a Foothold. We hope you found information that was useful and encouraging to you. And we want to invite you to visit the website, findingafoothold.com, and look at the resources that are available to you there. And also, we encourage you to follow us on our social media accounts, findingafoothold.com, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And thank you so much for being a caregiver. And our desire is that you find your foothold in caregiving. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again on next episode. Take care.